Hey guys, welcome back to Illness Grips Pencast. Today we're going to review hypernatremia. To look at hypernatremia, you really have to see it as a balance between the intake of sodium and free water to balance the losses generated by insensible losses and free water loss in urine when you have the inability to concentrate urine, as we'll talk about momentarily. I'll say for sodium intake that, yes, it's theoretically possible to make someone hypernatremic based off of giving them a sodium load, whether it be through salt tabs or through hypertonic saline, but that's usually pretty obvious to tell, whether it be in the stem of a question or with a patient. What's a little more difficult to tell sometimes, however, is a situation where by you do make someone hypernatremic by replacing hypotonic losses, like we'll talk about in a little bit, with isotonic fluids. It's a little more challenging to identify, but it's usually very rarely tested, um, so that's sort of the last that we'll say about that. What we'll do, though, is look at cases where these patients have inability to maintain this balance, whether by not taking in enough free water or by cases where you have too much loss. Let's focus on the losses first. So when we look at insensible losses, we really are thinking about the loss of certain body fluids that are hypotonic to serum. So one example of this would be osmotic diuresis. When I'm saying osmotic diuresis, I don't necessarily mean diuresis that is from the use of diuretics. When we give someone a diuretic, what we're doing is we are intentionally causing them to lose sodium and hoping that it's followed by water. So it's not necessarily a loss of free water. Another example would be sweat losses. So sweat losses obviously in patients that are physically active and sweating in that manner, but keep in mind when patients are febrile or hypermetabolic, they can generate more sweat, and so look for these patients as well to be losing a lot of free water in this manner. Another case of, uh, of hypotonic losses would be in non-secretory diarrhea, and we can also see it in vomitus as well, as this fluid has a high potassium concentration but not so much sodium. The next thing to look at is a case where you have really a lot of loss of free water in the urine, and it's due to an inability to concentrate the urine. And of course, this is due to the role of um, ADH. So the two cases here are where ADH is not being adequately produced, and that would be more of a central diabetes insipidus, or the case of ADH not being able to act at the distal tubule, in the collecting uh, tubule rather, and that would be nephrogenic DI. So what I want to do is I want to focus at the start with an illness script and go backwards and sort of um, explain how the illness script can be applied to the concepts that we just talked about. So our first one here would be that of an 85-year-old man whose status posts a tracheostomy and PEG-2 placement following a massive stroke who presents with altered mental status and is found to have a fever and a sodium of 165. So in this particular case, it's obvious that we have sort of an imbalance of free water loss. And in this gentleman, we can consider it um, possibly insensible. We don't have any clear evidence that he's losing other body fluids, but we do know that he's febrile. So one can assume that he's possibly losing a lot of free water in this manner. Another thing to look for in these particular cases is that, and we'll compare this to diabetes insipidus in a little bit, is that these patients... Here, we're going to have at least a normal urine output, if not decreased. Because keep in mind, there's a, an imbalance of free water intake to losses, and these patients can actually become relatively hypovolemic. And so the urine output could drop in the setting of acute kidney injury. You'll often see this particular presentation, and as I've presented it here with this gentleman, an elderly or demented patient who is otherwise unable to take care of him or herself and have access to free water, but keep in mind patients that are incapacitated for any reason and aren't able to get up and get access to free water or don't have adequate um, home care or pay people that are able to satisfy their ADLs. These are people that can, over time, become hypernatremic because they're not able to get the baseline amount of free water that's needed, even if they don't have an excessive amount of insensible losses. If you have a patient that has that is alert and is hyperatremic but is not thirsty, by definition they have to have a hypothalamic lesion because the thirst mechanism is so very sensitive to any sort of increase in your serum osmolality such that if it starts to rise at all we become very very thirsty and if you do not have that response by definition there's a hypothalamic lesion so let's compare that to a different 
um, illness script. So this one is of a 45-year-old woman with bipolar disorder who is on lithium, who presents with polyuria and polydipsia found to have a sodium of 155. So in this particular case, we see that this is likely due to um, diabetes insipidus, and more specifically, this is a nephrogenic diabetes insipidus due to lithium. You can also see a very similar presentation in patients that are hypercalcemic. Um, as I wanted to mention with the previous case and to compare and contrast, these patients are going to be very, very polyuric because of the profound losses of free water and because, as I've also mentioned before, they are alert and otherwise capable patients with an intact hypothalamus, they should be profoundly thirsty. So this is going to manifest with the polyuria and polydipsia that's very classic of DI. Now, I have put the sodium here at 155. Actually, the sodium is going to be much, much lower than that, and it's usually the upper range of normal in patients that have otherwise intact hypothalamus and access to free water. So look for the sodium in these patients to be closer to the upper end of normal, unless they have reasons to have diabetes insipidus and impaired access to free water. Thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos. If you like this style of video, please comment. Um, I hope to have another video coming out pretty soon. Until next time.